Well, hello. Welcome to Isaac Flores Software's Fire Protection Engineering Program. I designed the software to better uh, evaluate and manage risk. I'm a fire protection, I'm an independent fire protection consultant for several insurance carriers, and I visit many facilities, some of which include mega warehouses. This particular demonstration evaluates adequacy protection in a mega warehouse containing class four commodities stored to 50 feet high on double row racks. I will demonstrate how quickly and easily and accurately you could evaluate adequacy protection. I searched the internet for software that allowed me to do that. I found none, and I decided to design my own. I'm going to go fairly quickly to evaluate adequacy protection so you can see how long it takes. It takes about a minute. And then I'm going to go back. And, and demonstrate the program in a little bit more um, detail. So I'm going to click start. And when I do that, this window's open. It, it shows three times class one, class one to three, and class one to four commodity. I'm looking for class four commodity, and there are three areas that go into data. And the data that I enter is based upon the in ranks. I have two levels of in-rank sprinklers and two levels of face sprinklers, and the levels are 20 feet apart. So we're looking at this area, in-rank vertical distance, 20 feet apart. My ceiling sprinklers are on every temperature rated sprinklers, so I, I could go here, uh, store height at 25 feet with ordinary ceiling sprinkler temperature, and if I had higher temperature, 286, I select that. But basically selecting this button. And when I do that, the program pulls data from NFPA standard and place it on this empty cells. It gave me the density that I need, 0.35 over 2,000 square feet, ordinary ceiling temperature sprinklers. It is for single and double row racks, class one to class four commodity. Um, it gave me the whole demand and calculated an, uh, uh, an, an estimated uh, well, um, demand flow at the ceiling. I'm going to, if you need information on what class for commodity side, you could click that and that gives you information. And you could click information on plastic storage. So we, we're going to, let's proceed fairly quickly. I'm going to click next. Information is already populated. And now we need to enter water supply. I'm going to enter the water supply uh, given to me at the site or that I pulled from sprinkler diagrams and hydraulic calculations. And I click supply and demand button. When I open that, this window is open. And now I enter the water supply that was given to me from uh, city water pressure and a 1250 GPM uh, uh, booster pump. So the the, the the static pressure is 170, I enter 170. Residual pressure is 92. This is assuming the, the fire pump operating at uh, 150% capacity. The discharge is 1875 GPM. And then I enter in rack sprinkler demand and that was given to me at uh, this facility or that I got from sprinkler plants. The ceiling sprinkler demand is 10.25 at 99.5. And the in rest sprinkler demand is already balanced at the ceiling sprinkler pressure and the demand is uh, 479 at 99.5. We go at the host demand, but the host demand is already given, so leave this blank. We can make some changes if we want to, but I'm accepting 500 gallons per minute. We click OK. And when we did that, the computer calculated enter the water supply. You enter your water sprinkler demand. It enter your ceiling sprinkler de uh, demand. Density need is 0.35. And it calculated your, your total demand ceiling and in rack sprinklers. The, line, the lines look a little bit funny, but this is because the program calculates friction loss also to base riser 
So I'm going to uh, click, click this button, calculate friction loss against demand, and, and, and the line straight there now. I could also enter calculate friction loss against supply. You could see this change back and forward. I had no pressure drop. This I, have, I enter no pressure drop. And in, in my particular example, the friction loss, that the pressure, the demand for the sprinklers was calculated at the, to the fire pump. So there's no friction loss to calculate, but if we need to calculate friction loss, we click this button, calculate friction loss, and I'm gonna do it to, to demonstrate and enter some data. When we do that, this window's open, I'm able to enter pipe, uh, it's a friction loss calculator, and we're going to pipe information and fitting data uh, information. We select the pipe, it's a new pipe. The facility is uh, was constructed in 2013. And we could select a pipe diameter from six to eight inches. We're gonna select eight inches. Pipe schedule with dot iron. And then we select fittings by uh, clicking this drop down windows and selecting the fittings available. We basically select a 90 degree screw elbow, a standard T, a gate valve, and we could select a check valve. And then we select the quantity of each fitting. We could select one or up to five. We have one of each. We click OK, and a new other window opens up, and we go into the pipe diameter. Let's set the uh, 500 feet of pipe. And a friction loss is generated. Based upon the, the sprinkler demand, 1029 GPM. If we base it upon the water supply, we click this button, and our friction loss increases. And the friction loss line is automatically subtracted from the water supply to give you a pressure drop line. And this is your whole demand subtracted from the pressure drop line. And now it gives you the density available with, uh, with holes, density, density needed, density available. Uh, and the density available without holes. We had no friction loss uh, um, to calculate, so I'm gonna go back and see all the information that I calculated. Oh, and put a zero on the pipe length. And this shows the actual calculations to the fire pump. And that's how quickly you could calculate um, Adequacy protection. Our protection is adequate. It meets um, in rack sprinklers, but individually it meets ceiling sprinkler demand. But for the total demand, the total demand falls above your host line, but below the water supply line. And when a sprinkler demand does that, it falls in between the, the host demand and the water supply, is classified as nearly adequate. So for combined uh, holes, combine uh, holes, ceiling, um, ceiling sprinklers, in-rack sprinklers, uh, this system is, uh, is nearly adequate. But um, it's acceptable though. No need to make more additional recommendations. Um, and, and, and that's it. That's how quickly you could calculate adequate protection. It, it is an ideal tool for fire protection engineers that need to visit, uh, evaluate adequate protection in warehouses. And it has similar other programs to value flammable liquid, plastics, all kinds of uh, occupancies and, and commodities found in NFPA 13. So I'm basically pulling information for NFPA 13, NFPA 30, and other standards, and use it to populate the fields. And then uh, I enter water supply, sprinkler demand, um, friction loss, and I could quickly generate this uh, graph. This is a linear graph. I also have a lag 185 graph, and, and people prefer lag 185 since they're more accurate than lag 185. So I'm gonna go to my lag 185 graph, and here it is. Excel, I designed the program using Excel 2003. Uh, and I chose that because if, if you have a more modern version, then it should work a more modern version. But if you go back to 2000, it might not work on 2000 or the older version. But from 2003 to present, you should be able to use this program using whatever Excel software you have. The program does not generate a lag 185. I created a stable, 
and I put this information on the side to, to give me lines. If I want to get a water supply line, I click water supply, and when it drops down, so all I got to do is move it around to my static pressure, and then to my residual pressure, like so, and I got my water supply. And I do the same thing with a uh, sprinkler demand. It's a sprinkler demand line. Then I, once I have it, I click it and put it to where my demand points are, like so. Now, I also have little fittings and, and, and symbols that I use for this particular case. Uh, for the, To show the sprinkler demand, I click this little triangle. It drops down, and then I move it and bring it to, to, to where I want it to land. And the same thing for this open triangle. I, I use this open triangle to identify density available with holes and without holes. And to do that, I also have a, a guideline which I help me to apply those lines. And to identify the density available with holes and without holes, I put it like so, one side on top of the holes uh, with, the, with, with the, Water supply intercept the sprinkler demand, and with the um, hose demand intercept the sprinkler demand. Then I come down and read the flow. This flow over here is 11, um, 15 GPM, and I entered 11.30, and I entered that information here. And for the water supply, I went down, I read 12.15, and I entered that information here. And the computer gave me the density available with holes, 0.38 and 0.41 over here. Now, delete the guideline. And this is my density available on like 185. I could go back. And now I could click this blue button, plot like 185 density. I click it. And it changes slightly, 0.38 with holes and 0.41 without holes. The linear one are less conservative, and it shows 0.37 and 0.42. So when I click the plot like one identified density, even the tile will change. I have a linear graph density. When I plot like 185, it shows that I selected, I pulled the density for like 185 and put them on the linear graph. Now the linear graph is as accurately as a like 185 graph. And I now I could export the data to um, to, 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 to a loss prevention report. I click copy to export. And then I click next. And now it gives me a choice to um, to um, export the main screen or the like 185 graph. I'm gonna do both, copy main screen. Now I'm in copy mode. I'm gonna open my loss prevention report, which is blank. I need to start filling the uh, loss prevention report. And then I find a location to enter the, the, the test data. And I click Edit, Paste Special, click Picture. And there it goes. Paste my main screen plot into a loss prevention report. Uh, I could go back to the program and now plot my uh, lag 185. Uh, click Copy to Export like we did before. Click Next. Click Copy like 185 graph. Go back to um, to the report, find a location to put, a suitable location to paste it, click edit, um, paste special, and click picture, and I'm in. Here's my lag 185 in a loss prevention report. Now I could also do the same in Microsoft Paint. There are many customers that prefer, uh, the reports are based on access database or, or, or PDF database, and they want all the attachment to be pasted to, to those type of reports. So you could um, paste the data. In this case, like 185. If you uh, size it, it looks something like that. And then you could click uh, Save As. You could save it as a bitmap. Some companies prefer bitmap. Other companies do not. So decide what you're going to save it at and then save it. And then uh, attach those, um, uh, the data as pictures to your report. I'm going to go back and now um, I'm going to attach the main screen to um, to Microsoft Paint. Click Next. 
main screen and now it's um I'm gonna select a new one not saving it and paste now it's a main screen that I could save to uh, as a as a bitmap to an access database or as a picture to a PDF paper report format. Let's go back and I'll show you some other features of the program. In copy mode, I'm going to press escape. If you look at the screen, if you want to look at uh, how information is transferred quickly, you just press any of those buttons. And as you press it, information is transferred from the NFPA table to, 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 to the host prevention report. And then you could see uh, click figures, you could see um, rack storage that basically pictures that help you uh, select, um, make uh, make a better selection. So um, if you need to know what, what a commodity class, click this button here, what a commodity is. Tells you what class one commodity is, what class two commodity is, class three commodity is, and class four. And, and class four could contain plastics, a certain amount of plastics, and uh, uh, any even plastic that's granulated or a small um, free flowing is classified as, uh, as class four commodity. So um, this button tells you what plastics are. Uh, this is the material. This material is from group A plastics. This material is from group from group B plastic. And if you scroll down, you find out that this material is from group C plastics. So there's some information that help you um, classify the, the plastic material so you could better evaluate adequate protection. Um, and, and, and that's it. Um, I have also, I've designed all these programs to help you um, if a reactic protection, uh, control mode sprinklers for palatite storage, control mode sprinkler for rack storage of plastic, control sprinkler for group A plastics, uh, rubber tires, ESFR for storage up to 45 feet in height, and, and so forth, including flammable liquids. If you want to evaluate storage of flammable liquids, well, here, here's a similar program, works the same thing. The, it, the windows open automatically, and the first thing it does is give you the definition for the plastics. And then you can enter um, whether you have a uh, class 1B, 1C, 2, or 3A, or class 3B liquid. So you select, and then you select whether you have storage or pile ties, and then you select whether, whether you protect it with ceiling sprinklers or with water or foam spray protection. And then you select your storage on the five gallons to storage on the over five gallons to on the 60 gallons. So basically this is drums. And you can look at drum store. And then you go into water supply information, basically do the same. You could quickly evaluate adequate of protection for any storage or occupancy in a minute or two, and then export the test data. So it could easily be used by fire protection engineers to save time and, uh, and better man uh, evaluate risk and manage risk. And it could be used by the supervisor who is reviewing an engineering report to check for, uh, for accuracy in the report. That's it. Thank you for being my uh, fire protection program. Uh, I will, some, I will um, evaluate all the programs and place them on YouTube for your review. Thank you for your time.